Hello. I feel like I've had your family here at this point on this show. I've had a couple of your kids. I'm just saying, I've had a lot of your family here. Well, one time you should bring us all together here. I know. That's exactly. Will yeah. it be more exciting? Are y'all fun at Thanksgiving? Uh, it'll be great. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. It's great to have uh, Paul. I, mean, I know. Have y'all y'all met? Obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course. I mean, he has played several times when I did the Letterman show. Exactly. And, yes. Uh, we have, always, a funny, uh, we have got a funny connection, though, you and I. I don't know if you realize this, but before you were, a, you know, a, a, a great politician, you made a an album, a vinyl album, called Arnold Schwarzenegger's Total Body Workout. You working out to the hits of the 80s, and you worked out to m one of my songs, It's Raining Man, that I co-wrote oh with God. Paul Jabara. You have one, two, up, down, <laughs> up, down. <laughs> I'm telling you, I want to go to the studio with you too. I think. Oh my God, you feel like the original playlist guy making yeah, you playlists. Yeah, but I mean, workouts. that's why that record was such a big hit. I'm it was not sure because it was. of me going up and down and doing my squats and my <laughs> leg lifts and all of those things, but because it was via music. Well, you are uh, no fool. I mean, it's uh, great, I, it's a great I know song. exactly. I have good taste when it comes to music. I. Uh, <laughs> We all know that. You must love mine. Okay, um, I'm just kidding. Ah! I'm just kidding. Um, welcome to what do you our think New York studio. Here? Uh, exactly. You're like, I'm only too. coming exactly, for the music. Yeah. Um, no, welcome to our studio. This is our, well, our first you. season here in New York. We're very excited and we're very I know, excited. That's the first yeah. Yeah. Do you remember, like, when you first moved over here, like, do you have a first memory of New York? Um, I remember coming here in 1968 and uh, traveling through New York, then going to Los Angeles and uh, living on Muscle Beach. Yeah. Uh, but then I came back in 1969 and I won the Mr. Universe contest for the fourth time. Like you do. Uh, yeah. Here in, uh, yeah. in New York. And uh, so I remember that. And then right after that, I was offered to do this movie in New York. Yeah. There was a really great beginning. I, w I finally realized my dream. And then afterwards, I chased my dream and continued taking acting lessons, and uh, then my movie career took off. And uh, it was one of those kind of lucky things. When you first moved here, though, you obviously have a thick accent still, so I do too. Welcome to Texas. Um, but, but I, I have an accent. You, what? <laughs> so weird. Um, no, I was, I was just going to say, when you moved here, was there a lot of like lost in translation when you're having conversations with people, like you thinking you're saying something and they hear something else? Yeah, it's very difficult to adapt to a new language. You know, this is clear. I remember that uh, right in the beginning, a friend of mine, a Jewish friend of mine, said, he says, I know Austrian food. I, this is Hungarian restaurant uh, on Fairfax Avenue. He says, I'm going to take you there. So he took us there, and I ate this unbelievable, you know, vegetables and, and the meats and everything like that. And then I said to the guy, to the owner, he came to the table and says, can I help you with it? Do you want some more? And I said, yeah, can I have some more of your garbage? Your garbage? Yes, and so, so uh, my friend, so he says, say? what do you call my food? What do you, what, say, say this again, what do you call my food? You call it garbage? And then my friend jumped in and says, no, no, no. What he actually meant was cabbage. He wants to have some more <laughs> of your cabbage. I mean, the things like that will come out. It was a crazy, yeah. I don't know, but I mean, he understands. I said, oh, cabbage. You want more of the cabbage? I said, yeah, yeah, cabbage. I'm sorry. And Pretty bold of a guy, though. Like, you looking like you and like him being bold enough to be like, what did you say? I don't know if I'd, I'd have just been exactly, it's garbage, bye. <laughs> I would have just left. Um, I heard this crazy story. It's random and I have to know if it's true. Did you accidentally break a first lady's ankle and how does that happen, if so? Well, um... George Bush invited me, when I was the chairman of the President's Council on Fitness, he would invite me always to Camp David. This was 1991, 92, uh, when he was president. Huh. He would invite me up there literally like every month. He loved hanging out with me and working out with me. We did throwing horseshoe and, uh, you know, uh, going running up there and all this stuff. And uh, I was one time up there in the winter. And so he said to me, he says, I have this great uh, sled which was not really a sled, it was a toboggan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, so with sleds, you can steer the sled with, the, with your feet. Uh, but that one I couldn't really steer. So we go down the hill in the snow there. He's sitting behind me, and he says, you steer. And I, I did not know how to steer. So, so I mean, it's just going fast and fast, and all of a sudden we're approaching this tree. 
And all of a sudden, Barbara comes up behind the tree, and then we just ran into her leg. And, uh, and so the poor Barbara Bush, you know, she was like, uh, she had to go to the hospital afterwards. Oh she God. had the, you know, a sprained leg, and she got a cast on it, and the whole thing like that. But I have to say that they, they were very gracious about it, and the way they, <laughs> they, they took it. And, uh, you know, I, I apologized. I said, I feel really bad. Nobody has this it. story. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. She was a wonderful first lady. So we want to talk about your new book. So it's called Be Useful, Seven Tools for Life. Wait, I have it right here. So, oh, oh. Um, how did you come up with seven? Like, it feels like, did you know the number was going to be that? Like, how did you come up with that number? The key thing is that you pick specific things that really helped you mm -hmm. in life and that make your life fortunate as, uh, as my life is, and just extraordinary, and to be successful. But I think it's important to mention, I always say I'm not a self-made man because so many people write stories. Schwarzenegger is an example of a self-made man. And I always say I say I'm not because I said everything that I've achieved is because of the help of other people. Absolutely, you know, if but like that's a true Some leader. American brought me over to America, Joe Weider, I remember he brought me to America. There were the training partners that helped me all the time to train and to become champion. Uh, there were bodybuilders that brought over dishes to my apartment, blankets, pillows, a black and white TV, a radio. I mean, all this stuff. I mean, you have no idea what this feels like when you are this immigrant, this foreigner, that has $20 in his pocket when I came over here. And then all of a sudden, people show this generosity. It's love. It helped yeah, you like kindness. that, and this love and inclusion. It's, it's important to, to recognize that you're not a self-made man, because then you, you realize how many people helped you, mm -hmm. and then you realize how many people you have to help also. Yeah. If they helped you, now you have to give something back, yeah. and I have to help other people. That's why in the book, the last chapter is, break your mirror. You know, the mirror that makes you always look at yourself. Yeah. Break that mirror and just look beyond that and you will see the millions of people that need your help. And that's why in the, in the 70s I got involved with Special Olympics and I started becoming the national trainer and then the international trainer. And mm -hmm. then later on I became the chairman of the President's Council of Fitness uh, under President Bush. And then later on I started after school programs because yeah. I realized that 70% uh, of the kids come from families that, where both of the families are working. Yeah, both the parents. So, so yeah. both of the parents are working. So, so now there's no one there for the kids in the afternoon. Yeah. So what happens? Or there's so just what, one parent in the household, so they have to have somewhere it, to go. Yeah. It's a, it's a major, major challenge. Mm. Programs are very important because it gives you in the afternoon. Mm. We provide tutoring for the kids and uh, That's amazing. Uh, homework assistance, sports programs, uh, arts programs, and all that. Yeah. And just the key thing is to have adult supervision, so they are between three and six o'clock having a great time studying getting better in different learning areas. Teamwork, and learning teamwork, exactly, yeah. And their education improves tremendously, and their grades improve it tremendously. Yeah. So it's, it's really a win-win situation, and the parents that. can work without having the headache. So this is just one of the worry. things that I do to give back to the community. And then, of course, when I ran for governor, I turned my back on doing movies every year yeah. and making this $20 million a movie a year, yeah. and then just said, okay, I'm gonna go and just be a public servant, serve the people of California, so but when you're like, blessed, you bless others. It's all about giving back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. You know, so. Well, I want to come back to the one you were talking about earlier, breaking mirrors. So it's, op it's open your mind and break mirrors, right? Well, what exactly a, does that... I love that. Opening your mind is, is another chapter in there, which is, you know, open your mind and shut your mouth. Yeah. Oh. Because, yeah, because, <laughs> because, you know what? Uh, I could use that one. <laughs> no, but, no, no, but I'm telling you because... Uh, I wanted to just let people know that I, uh, one of my, the secrets of my success was that I always was like a sponge. I listened very carefully of what mm. people have to say. I am a very good listener, and I think it really helped me in my career, it helped me in my acting career, it helped me in my political career, that I was more interested in listening rather than talking. And uh, so I think it's just one of those things because so many people are so concerned about you know, what they have to say, but you don't learn anything. If you Your say mouth it, is moving. You, you, yeah. you learn when you listen. You know, God gave us two ears and only one mouth. <laughs> so, so, so we might as well just listen twice as much yeah. and talk less. I mean, that's what the, what the I what feel the like God sent about. you here today for me. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I feel like I'm, this is an intervention, and my crew is like, oh, that's a. 
Well, let's do another break. This is incredible. Everybody, y'all gotta go get this. Arnold's new book is called Be Useful, Seven Tools for Life. It's out now. And everyone in the audience is getting a copy. You can also find Arnold's current newsletter online.